Good evening. Welcome to Employment Law Today. I'm Eric Sauver from the Law Office of Eric M. Sauver, Employment Law Business Law Attorney and host of the show. I'd like to welcome our guest tonight, uh, entrepreneur and business owner and restaurateur. Uh, his name is Jeremiah Fox. Jeremiah, welcome to the show. Hey, what's up, everybody? How are you? Nice to see you again, Eric. Nice to see you too. Nice to have the uh, tables reversed here, roles reversed rather. I know I was on your show in August. It was great to be, uh, I think you were my intro into uh, Talk Radio NYC. Is that right? I believe it was, yes. So That's awesome, great. Yeah, so I'm glad you can great. make it. Uh, yeah, thank you. Got my mood lighting on. I'm in, actually in my restaurant, Della, right now in, uh, in Brooklyn. We're on, the, on Prospect Ave in the Winter Terrace section of Brooklyn. And it's five o'clock and it's starting to open. And of course, all the bells and whistles are ringing. <laughs> oh, okay. But I just have to be here. I have to do it from here tonight. Well, I'm glad you're here. Thanks for joining us. Really great to have you. Um, I thought I'd on. just tell a little bit to our, um, to our uh, audience tonight about the show itself for those who might be joining maybe for the first time or those who are uh, repeat uh, listeners. So Employment Law Today is a weekly show that helps businesses out there, small to mid-sized whether you're a, a small business owner, or a company, it could be a restaurant, a brick and mortar shop. And we basically help companies and business owners to, to navigate the employment law and labor law issues that this pandemic has brought out. And we do so with two types of guests on the show. Some of my guests are people like myself. I'm an employment law attorney. So I have employment law attorneys on the show or HR managers and employee relations folks as well as some people who also specialize in things like video marketing or cybersecurity who can help businesses to get over some of these challenging issues that they face during the pandemic. And then my second level of guest or rather second type of guest uh, would be someone just like Jeremiah, someone who is uh, a small business owner who has been hanging in there during the pandemic and even at times thriving frankly through it. And I like to have these guests on as a motivational and inspirational part of the show. I think that, you know, a lot of us are, you know, with, with the pandemic just rolling on as it is, I think a lot of people out there are very, uh, at times, a little nervous. Maybe they feel discouraged at times or in terms of how, how to manage and navigate the economic recession and some of the challenges out there. And so my thought was to have guests like Jeremiah, who are small businesses, and to kind of talk a little bit about what's working for them and what's working. So Jeremiah, will be talking with you today about how you do it. You know, what's, what's your, uh, how do you tap into those inner resources of resilience? And, um, and so before we get to that, I just want to take a moment to um, introduce Jeremiah, um, if I may, for a second here. Um, as I mentioned, Jeremiah is, uh, his name is Jeremiah Fox, originally from Nashville, Tennessee. Jeremiah settled in Brooklyn, New York after receiving his master's degree in music from the University of Buffalo in 2004. And with an equal passion for the hospitality industry, Jeremiah spent the last 15 years hustling in the New York City food and entertainment scenes, consulting for and opening over a dozen brick and mortar businesses. Well, it's pretty impressive. Uh, he's also been <laughs> consulting for uh, businesses and he currently is the owner of Della Restaurant in Brooklyn, which is where Jeremiah is calling in from right now. Yep. There it is, Della, right there. And uh, he's also the GM, the general manager for Windsor Wine Group, and the chairman, if I have this right, of the Windsor Terrace Food Co-op, also in Brooklyn. Uh, Jeremiah also hosts a live radio show uh, on right here on the station on Talk Radio NYC. It's called The Entrepreneurial Web. Um, I've been on it as a guest, and I've watched it. It's an awesome show. I recommend people check it out Fridays at noon. And uh, he also in his spare time, if, I don't know where that comes in, but he actually moonlights uh, as a martial arts instructor as well as an entrepreneur. So with that background, again, just a warm welcome, Jeremiah, uh, my friends, good to have you on the show and uh, hope you're doing well today. How, how are you feeling overall? How's the, uh, how's the week been so far? Yeah, no, this week, this week uh, it's early, so uh, it feels good so far, but it's only Tuesday. So there's plenty of opportunity for fire, water leaks, uh, car accidents, all kinds of things uh, happening in my world that, that can go south quickly. Um, mm -hmm. Not even not even in talking about uh, employment related issues. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, you know, being an attorney and a litigator and uh, I, I have a little bit of experience with that in terms of uh, fires happening, you know, putting out uh, client fires at once. And um, but I must say, you have a very uh, 
cool Vinit, you know, way about you, a kind of a cool job. I mean, I, I, I saw the way you managed to get onto the call, onto the uh, show tonight. Uh, I sent you a text and you were like, I, I'll be here, which I knew you would. Um, yeah. And you kind of jumped right in at like 4.59. It was a very smooth entrance. It was, there wasn't like, you weren't breaking a sweat, you know? Um, I won't comment if I was a little bit, but I knew you'd make it and here you are. But, uh, but you know, I want to just get into a little bit of our topic tonight and then yeah. maybe kind of have a nice conversation here with, with Jeremiah and maybe fix my lighting on my side here. Um, you know, as I was mentioning with the COVID-19 pandemic, just hanging around, uh, I started out by talking about the my motivation for having this show and, you know, seeing how many business owners out there and entrepreneurs uh, are worried and some of us worn down. And I've heard colleagues of mine talk about just feeling unmotivated, you know, in yeah. terms of um, pushing forward. And there's, there's a lot to be at times worried about, right? We turn on the news, there's all this talk of recessions. And I know the restaurant and hospitality industry where I have a number of clients, they're really feeling the pinch since people are take out only curbside pickup with delivery or minimum 25% or rather maximum 25% capacity. Yeah. So you know, I thought I'd just talk with, with Jeremiah in light of his experience and find out what tips he has for fellow small business owners in the face of the pandemic. You know, what advice can he give? What, what kind of uh, adaptation has he had to have in his own experiences? So now in law, we'd call this like asking a compound question, like in a deposition or something like that. So I'll try to just kind of break it down more naturally. Um, yeah, Jeremiah, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? I may not introduce you, but Oh, maybe a little bit about um, like what drew you into the hospitality industry after getting a master's degree in music, which I know I think I understand you teach as well, but how did you get yeah. called to uh, this field? So I started both uh, at a relatively young age. I got into music. My mom's also, uh, she has a, a master's in music as well. So it was in the family um, and, and growing up uh, my early years in Nashville, which is a musical town those, you know, kind of obvious, but uh, I've always had an equal passion for food and hospitality. I started to learn to cook around 11 or 12 years old, which is when I started to really take music seriously. And by 14, I was working in a restaurant. Um, you know, back then you could work at 14, no problem uh, without working papers or anything like that. Um, and, and it just progressed. And it was something I did all throughout high school. It was a great way to make cash. It was super exciting. I always, you know, both industries were that that drew me to them, just the excitement and the nightlife. I was never I was never drawn to like a, you know, kind of a nine to five or desk job, which, you know, never had to do. Um, I've always I've always worked evenings and weekends, basically, um, for, for 25 plus years now. But uh, I love the excitement and both had an equal amount of uh, creative outlet. You mentioned that in the email you sent to me, like. You know, you could kind of see you know, certainly, you know, making dishes, coming up with uh, drinks, designing a menu, interior design, all that's like super creative. It's very similar to producing an album. Um, and the, the requirements are this are similar where there's a lot of technical proficiency you need to have. So, you know, my degrees were in, in percussion and drumming specifically. So you had to practice, you know, eight hours a day when I that, that was the expectation in grad school, you know, to, to have the proficiency technically that you needed to answer all the calls. And, and it's similar in the restaurant industry where like you're, you're in there cooking, you're making drinks 10, 12, sometimes 14 hours a day just to get, to get better, to provide better service. And they both had that sense. I've always enjoyed that idea of, of offering a service um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, owning my own business, being my own boss. So as a freelancer, that was the allure of that too. It's like, oh, I don't have to like punch a clock. Um, you know, you realize as a freelancer, you work for everybody, <laughs> you know, sure, you just sure. work for everybody that calls you. And it's funny as a business owner, you realize like once you get to the top, it just folds back down. And now you just answer to all your employees and customers. So like, yeah, you're the boss, you know, you get to wear the shirt, but you, you have exponentially more bosses. And if you got a few kids, well, then you got a few more. <laughs> um, so, uh, but yeah, they both had, uh, you know, that, that same kind of pull and attraction to me. Mm -hmm. The restaurant industry is significantly more volatile, you know, it's just like a crazy, crazy environment at all times where music, not necessarily music can be volatile, but there are definitely times of like calm and you're just creative and, and it's, it's not the same like five o'clock hit every day necessarily where like the restaurant, it's like every evening, every weekend for sure, just expect like utter chaos, be prepared mm -hmm. for it. And, uh, and, and that, that I'll rope that into to my, you know, the response to the bigger question is how 
you know, getting, getting through all this, that's just like the restaurant training. It's just like chaos every day. So mm -hmm. that's one thing that really helped me. So as I was, you know, in my, like in my twenties, even I was like, man, this is too much chaos. I want, I want something that's, that's a little bit uh, more creative. And so I pursued the music degree at the time, getting a master's was the, uh, you know, especially in the, I guess this is like the late nineties. They were the, the um, idea was to get a master's degree so you could teach collegiately, which is what I wanted to do. I was a grad assistant in my, um, my master's degree and I really enjoyed that, but, but there were no jobs really. Um, and then when I was finishing my master's, they were like, really, you should get your PhD. And I was like, really, you're just trying to suck money out of my, my my life uh so mm -hmm. i just kind of finally aborted that and and supported myself the whole time in the restaurant industry and then once i got out especially once i moved to new york i, I made the conscious decision to not pursue the freelance career i did plenty of freelancing here but i did it on the side i specifically once we moved here in 2005 said i want to i want to kill it in the new york city hospitality industry and mm -hmm. and that's what i set out to do and that was 15 years ago and i'm still here <laughs> yep. It hasn't so killed you're me still yet. Standing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's interesting, Jeremiah, in terms of the creativity part, because so you know how I practice employment and business law, and as, as such, I have a lot of restaurants as clients. And I have definitely seen that a lot of the people I, that I've had as clients are artists, whether they are musicians, whether they are painters, whether they're in a band on the side. You mentioned the percussion, you know, playing the drums and, and percussion instruments. and. It's, it's, it's off, uh, but yet I've also seen the industry attract folks who like a sense of, of order, of completion, of mm -hmm. almost like a task oriented where they know they're going to have these customers, they know they're going to have service, they're going to you know, make these dishes or oversee the making of these dishes, they're going to add up the receipts at the end of the night and, and then the place will be cleaned. And so I, I can see how it attracts the different personality types. Um, and maybe that's a, a way I feel like we've always had a little bit of a vibe since August, you know, since I first met you and I noticed, you know, on social media, um, in, in terms of being in law as an employment law attorney, there's always, uh, especially when you're in litigation, you have to sort of expect and expect and expect you know, the emergency, you know, the fires from clients. But what I think what I hear you saying is that you have the um, sort of the combination of the creativity and there's, there's definitely not, it's definitely not boring. So you don't, like, you're not really a fan of, boredom and, and you like a bit of the the chaos almost becomes in a way if it's chaos is the norm it's almost like if you get existential or is it truly chaos if it's always yeah. but I, I do I, I do actually think that's very interesting to note because in this pandemic when you think about it you know the way this all started out I mean I, I remember my wife and my and I and my and our son we were on vacation the very first week in March you know so so we made a conscious effort from the day before we left until that week, just to do a, a news blackout, we were thinking, you know what, the news is often it gets us all, <laughs> you know, jazzed up, and it's sometimes depressing and it's outrageous. And so, so when we go on vacation, we like just do a blackout. We don't really do Facebook much. And oh, I know we noticed how many things were closing up. This is right before everything shut down with COVID. And of course, you know, we knew about COVID, we heard about it, but and now it's really we got back, and all of a sudden, life is just flipped upside down for, for us. And I'm sure for you as a restaurant owner, I'm sure for many people, you know, watching tonight, listening tonight, where they are home with their kids, they're homeschooling, trying to run a business, trying to run a restaurant. Um, and I, I know we have a, a commercial break coming up shortly, but um, one thing I'm, I'm curious to know is, you know, did, did your, it sounds like your training in chaos may have kind of prepared you for the chaos of, okay, everything is now upside down, right? We're all now, we're home and everything's shut down. We're wearing masks. We, you know, the grocery stores are a major run. You know, you yeah. can't get your, ba your basic necessities. Um, and I would, I've been curious to hear how you and your, uh, your team, you know, responded in terms of, um, I know we have to take a commercial break in just a moment. So um, I think maybe when we come back, yeah, we can talk a little bit about that and maybe share some other things that, uh, what you found, what were some of the challenges even though you've got that good jive when it comes to chaos, so that good, you know, that that comp compatibility with it. What were some? Well, there were some moments maybe when you were kind of getting a little worried. And so, you know, like what did you draw upon? Like, to, was it a, a pivot of your business model? Was it a, you know, drawing on your resources from uh, certain practices? You know, whether they're like jujitsu or spiritual. So maybe when we come back, we can get into a little bit of that and. Uh, 
On that note, folks, I want to take a break. Um, stick around. You're listening, listening to Employment Law today. My name is Eric Sauver, host, and my special guest tonight is Jeremiah Fox from Della Restaurant. Be right back. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Do you love or are you intrigued about New York City and its neighborhoods? I'm Jeff Goodman, host of Rediscovering New York, a weekly show that showcases New York's history and its extraordinary neighborhoods. Every Tuesday live at 7 p.m., we focus on a particular neighborhood and explore its history, its vibe, its feel, and its energy. Tune in live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on talkradio.nyc. Hey, all you listeners looking to boost your business. Why not advertise on Talk Radio NYC with very reasonable rates? Interested? Simply send us a message on our website, talkradio.nyc. Hi, I'm Graham Dobbin. Join me every Thursday evening for the Mind Behind Leadership here on talkradio.nyc. We speak to people from business, sport, military and politics, all around what makes a great leader. The personal experiences of what's worked and maybe more importantly, what hasn't worked. So that's seven o'clock every Thursday evening. The Mind Behind Leadership here on talkradio.nyc. Listen to real stories of real leaders. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC. Uplift, educate, empower. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Eric Sauver here at Employment Law Today with my guest, Jeremiah Fox. Jeremiah, it's funny, I was going to segue into some questions about some of the challenges of the pandemic, how they hit and how you reacted. But then I realized that uh, one thing I may have uh, skipped in our intro with you is just to ask you, you know, you talked about what drew you into the hospitality industry and the, the parallels between music and, and uh, hospitality in terms of creativity and things moving and chaos of it all and the, the, uh, the lack of boredom. Um, but I also realized that you've got the Della shirt from the restaurant. And I thought maybe I'd ask you if you could share with us a little bit about your restaurant. You know, what was yeah. your, uh, what are some of your main dishes, you know, and what was your draw to owning, you know, <laughs> to, operating the restaurant? <laughs> to taking, it's like buying a boat. <laughs> you know, what do they say about a boat? It's just like, you might as well throw money out the window. Um, so Della, it's again, it's on Prospect Avenue in Wizard Terrace, which is a idyllic little neighborhood in Brooklyn. Uh, it, it's an old village, literally, uh, that it's sandwiched between uh, Greenwood Cemetery and Prospect Park, which are two 500 acre green spaces. So it's just, you know, kind of hidden and unknown unless you're, you know, you've been around forever or you just happen to live here. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was the neighborhood was largely underserviced in terms of small business, especially when we moved here 15 years ago. You know, we we lived right on the commercial artery in the in the neighborhood, and out of 25 commercial spaces, maybe six or seven were occupied. There was mm -hmm. a lot of graffiti covered gates that were just down, you know, all the time. And so slowly, landlords started to offer them up, and and locals started to take interest in them. And and my partners and I were we were on the forefront of that, and and definitely a major contributor to like the kind of business revival around here. And it, it's crazy, even even during this time. I'd say occupancy is at like 95% now. I think there's one vacant space, even though some some businesses have closed since March, they've been they've been reoccupied since then. And and ones that shuttered temporarily were able to get back open and some just stayed open. Um, so it's a great little spot is, is you know, a great community to open a, a, a business like this. And, and there wasn't anything like this. And we so uh, my partners opened uh, the wine store that we have, uh, um, which Windsor Wine Group manages. Uh, it's called Juicebox. 
mm -hmm. fun little playful name uh, right next to the park here. We opened that in 2007. So we had all this time kind of as a demographic study and just listening to what the community uh, you know, said they were interested in. And the two things that stood out were Italian food, because there mm -hmm. wasn't really an Italian restaurant, and something with a full bar. So that's what we really set out to do and just kind of catered our experience, which my, rest, my uh, I'm sorry, my partners have a lot of experience in hospitality and restaurants as well. Mm -hmm. uh, one was a food critic, one managed some of the craziest restaurants in, in the city uh, over the years. And um, we just kind of pulled our resources and, and came up with Della, which is largely uh, an Italian menu. We make our own pasta which is a huge draw. We have a very craft uh, cocktail menu, uh, part of which is called the 718 menu, which is the area code for Brooklyn and Queens. Mm -hmm. And I made that, I designed that menu with um, a bunch of locally uh, owned distillers, which also has seen a revival since like 2010, there was a tax law adjusted that allowed uh, for farm licenses. So this revival of distillation kind of coincided with my interest in cocktail making I was very good friends with a lot of them and we came up with a bunch of crazy cocktails together. So we have a signature cocktail list. We have a very unique kind of pasta, uh, fresh pasta menu and mm -hmm. some other fun things that we draw from, uh, you know, other parts of the Mediterranean and even, uh, even into Morocco and the Middle East for mm -hmm. our menu. Um, but it's just a creative, fun, uh, you know, if I could give you a tour of the place inside, I would, mm -hmm. uh, unique layout. That was what we really wanted to, uh, to do. And that really taps into that creative aspect where, you know, it's Italian, but we don't have chicken parmesan and, uh, you know, Alfredo, we do, uh, we do a duck ragu with fresh pappardelle instead of a puttanesca, we mm. do like a, a baby octopus with pancetta and uh, spicy tomato sauce. And, you know, we just really shake things up a little bit and like to turn it on its side. Um, mm. And, you know, you certainly like alienate some customers that way you get a little niche and there's certain people that they're just like, yeah, I'm not interested in that. But then you find the ones that do enjoy it. And you really just like hammer that nail with with those folks and uh and we've been here for we're coming up on five years next month so no great yeah i think when you have a niche like that in that type of menu i think you do take a risk certainly is a risk involved yeah. that <laughs> people that are just coming for your staple like chicken parm and spaghetti you're not gonna might not show up but they might although they might show up and i'd be pleasantly surprised but yeah. certainly you have that but then i think the people you do find once you find them they're pretty hooked you know i know that yeah when I used to live in New York City, I used to live in the Upper East Side, and I lived in Astoria, Queens for a while before then. And for my birthdays, I'd always look for an Italian restaurant or a Greek restaurant or something that was different. And the, the places I tended to gravitate towards were the ones that were Italian. And but then when you got there, it was like you described, like there's a you know a different. It's not your standard Italian. There's some Mediterranean. There's some tapas involved as well. So well, congratulations on coming up on five years. And the name Della is that is that named after one of you, a special name, a special person in your life, or it's just- Yes, that Italian is named, name that, no, it's, it's funny, it sounds Italian. It's a little Jewish girl, actually. <laughs> um, my my business partners, uh, they're a couple, they, uh, they uh, had a third child. There's 10 years between their second and third. <laughs> oh, so it was unexpected and it was, uh, they, it was not long after we signed the lease here. Actually, when we signed the lease, there was no talk of a, of a third child. And then uh, all of a sudden uh, she was like, oh, I'm pregnant. And I was like, oh, <laughs> so the restaurant, you know, the, the construction was delayed because we were the contractors for the, for the build out. And, um, and we had a different business identity from a previous, uh, we did a pop-up about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we were using the same LLC and we were gonna use that same business identity. And then, uh, you know, we had time to think about it and, and we just decided to go with that. It was just like a, a fresh take on things. You know, Della was, uh, it, it, she gave us, something else to focus on in life. And then it, it gave the business a new identity too. And, and mm. that was the whole idea is servicing the people of this neighborhood, the families of this area and, and to name it after, you know, one of our own children was really special to us. And really just that, that became the identity and, and, and gave us something to focus on. And it sounds Italian, so it's kind of cool. <laughs> yep. Then can I add to the heart and the soul of, uh, you know, you're really going to feel that, you know, it, what you're saying reminds me of a funny story from a, a colleague of mine. Uh, he told me he, he named the business after um, his two children's names combined. And he was driving his son at the time. I, I think his son is now like 20. His son was maybe like five at the time or maybe six years old. And he told the son, you know, part of the name, your, your name is in this business as a commercial real estate property management company. So maybe not quite as 
uh, a little more nine to five, a little more suit and tie, which, you know, but um, so he told his son, I named this in part after you. And his son was, you know, paused and, you know, said to him, like, well, daddy, I think I should get some of the profits. And, and yeah, that, <laughs> you got to be careful. <laughs> what, are what are profits? And he actually described. So he felt a, a mixture of reaction. On one hand, he thought, hey, I'm raising a, you know, very sharp kid here. On the other hand, he thought, you know, like, well, that doesn't, <laughs> seems a little off. Giving me the shakedown, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and, you know, I'm glad we're talking about this because some people might be listening and they're tuning into employment law today where often I talk about employment law issues. And like I said, I mentioned, I have guests to talk about, you know, employee relations, HR, but mm -hmm. um, I realize that, and that's help, helpful for people. But if you're out there listening and you have employees and you have issues, you know, you, you and you're hearing about, you know, these messages of, you know, to sort of keep calm and carry on. And, um, but if you're not seeing that by other people, it's easy, I think, to get into a defeatist mindset, you know, to feel that, you know, it's, it's all doom and gloom and that we, the restaurant's going to be, industry's going to be dead. And so I, I guess I wanted to ask you, you know, for those listening, because one of my goals was to have you on and to hear your experience, not so people would compare themselves and say, oh man, why am I doing so poorly, but so they can say, you know, hey, here's a regular guy, you know, just like me, you know, he's, he's got, you know, down to earth and he's got these different businesses and he may have had some hard times during the pandemic, but, you know, here's how he, you know, approached it. So I was I kind of, my segue, I thought maybe into our next next topic, next question, mm -hmm. Jeremiah. Um, yeah, when the pandemic first hit or even at some points in the middle, were there any times that you found it got very, like what were some of the most challenging aspects of that? Any times when it got really rough for you um, if you don't mind my asking that in person. Yeah, no, not at all. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the, I wouldn't say the first week, but definitely by the second or third week when things mm -hmm. were really getting crazy. I mean, the, it was tricky between the wine store and here because they had not yet identified what was going to be considered essential. And they were right. saying, you know, all non-essential businesses were going to have to close. And I have friends that work in like crazy government agencies, like emergency response and stuff like that. And they're mm -hmm. telling me, don't worry, they'll never shut the restaurant down. They will mm -hmm. never shut it down. And I was like, okay, that's great. What about the liquor store? And they're like that. I'm not so sure about, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and we have, we also have friends with the state liquor authority. So we're talking to them and they're like, they're not going to, we're in the three tier system. They're not going to shut down the liquor store. And we're like, it was just like that last moment up until we really heard whether or not, I think it was, Mm -hmm. Maybe it was like the week of the 20th, March 20th. That was that was definitely like a hairy week. And then I remember specifically on the 20th, I had, you know, we had sales tax were due for the restaurant that day. There was a mm -hmm. number of the big, big bills. And like I had just enough money to do that. And I was thinking, man, if I just need one more solid weekend before, mm -hmm. you know, and then we can make adjustments and then they shut dining rooms down. I was like, damn, I'm not getting that last solid weekend. Mm -hmm. And on the 20th at like 4.30, Cuomo said, you can, you can delay your sales tax with no penalty. And I was like, cool, I'm going to sit on that money. Right. Thank you. <laughs> you know? Um, right. But yeah, that those first week, that first week or two, there was definitely like a Thursday or Friday where I just went home and sat down and I was just like, what's going to happen. And then we realized, you know, what we had to work with. And then we just mm -hmm. set to work and then not a big issue. I'd say a couple of weeks ago, there was a point where I was just tired. I haven't had a day off since February. I've worked mm -hmm. every day every afternoon, every evening, I've been at my restaurant absolutely every night. I've just mm -hmm. had my hands on the machine every day. And, you know, that wears on you over time. And there was definitely a, a time a couple of weeks ago where I was just like, I think I'd like to burn it all at this point. I think I just want to take a gas can and burn it all and take the insurance <laughs> money. You know, like I got a couple of friends that do bad things like that. You know, <laughs> just like, who can I call? For the record, folks, he's kidding. Just yeah. for the record, as an attorney, uh, <laughs> don't not, recommend you know, it. No, Jeremiah is a, <laughs> that's really, it's a Brooklyn thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah. But otherwise, the rest of it, you know, uh, it, it was, it was, again, being in the restaurant industry, uh, you're, you're pretty used to like getting smacked around. Uh, the rest of it almost seemed like normal business, just with an abnormal uh, face. Mm -hmm. I can I can see how that would be tough too. I mean, the the unknown, the waiting to know if you'd be open or closed or not. And you know, often in a crisis, people say that the the early parts are when the adrenaline's pumping and people are going and they're they're ready to rock and roll and it's either a fight or flight mode and they just dive in. I mean, when this all started, you know, I rolled up my sleeves and started, you know remapping my networking online, changed some workshops I had proposed to virtual webinars and presentations and such. And, and I think sometimes the hardest part also is in the middle because 
in the beginning of a crisis, you can, you know, sort of fire on all the cylinders. And then of course, if there's an end in sight, you can see the end. And I think we're sort of in the middle. I mean, I think a lot of us didn't know how long Feels that way. it would be. <laughs> and, you know, we've got to take a commercial break, Jeremiah, when we come back, um, we'd love to hear more about, you were in that spot, say you had some challenges, how, what, what kind of like kicked in for you? You know, mm -hmm. what, what maybe was going through your mind? What, what did you draw on? Was it, you know, the support of your you know, partners? Was it, you know, your family? Um, because I think it's an important note, let's say for those listening who don't have that uh, thrill around chaos um, <laughs> that, you know, you seem comfortable with. And yeah. you know, for those that are a little bit more risk averse. And so we actually are already on our second commercial break. Time flies when you're having fun, you know? It does. Um, so folks that are listening, we're gonna come back with some, some more practical and operational tips and talk about the inner resources that we can all draw upon uh, as business owners during these, these challenging times. So uh, Eric Sauver with Jeremiah Fox here on Employment Law Today on Talk Radio NYC. Stick around, we'll be right back. You are listening to Talk Radio NYC. Uplift, educate, empower. Are you interested in having a better relationship with yourself, others, and God? Greetings. I'm your host, Dr. George Andow, for the show, A Journey Through Into Awareness. On my show, we journey into the awareness that the mind of God is the true seat of our personal consciousness. We join together each Monday at 7 p.m., so tune in on Talk Radio NYC. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your conscious consultant. And on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. Are you a curious person, always asking questions? Do you desire to be in the know? Then join me, Antonia, host of So Now You Know, Thursdays at 5 p.m. at talkradio.nyc. Listen in as I attempt to satisfy that curiosity. I will be talking with amazing everyday people. Join the fun. So now you know on Thursdays at 5 p.m. at talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Welcome back to Employment Law Today here on Talk Radio at NYC. I'm your host, Eric Sauber. Here with my guest tonight, Jeremiah Fox, owner of Della Restaurant, general manager of Windsor Terrace Food, I'm sorry, Windsor Wine Group and Juice Box, and uh, host of the Entrepreneur Web here on this station, Talk Radio at NYC on Fridays at noon. Um, Jeremiah, welcome back. Good to have you on the thank show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Yeah, yeah. So really hearing some interesting stuff here from you, you know, talking about your journey, some of the some of the the sort of like break and sweat moments that I think all of us have had around this pandemic. Yeah. That I think includes private practice, attorneys like myself, it includes restaurant owners, maybe brick and mortar stores. And I think it also includes employees of places too. You know, it's funny, we were talking earlier and you were saying how, you know, you were your own boss, you answer to yourself, and then you realized over time that this is probably something I think a lot of our listeners can identify with. If you own a business, you answer to your customers, your employees, the uh, state liquor authority, the regulations and rules out there. Um, you know, I'm uh, as an attorney, my own practice in 2001, and I, I also relish being a boss and being in charge of everything. But at times, it can be a lot of stress and pressure because you're in charge of everything. So and you, I answer to my clients. I answer to um, to a judge or a mediator or a court and arbitrator. So, so it's definitely interesting to see how that 
dynamic plays out. I think a lot of business owners out there, and again, our show uh, really is anyone's welcome to listen if you have an interest in employment law, but I think that for small business owners out there listening, they want guidance on employment law issues, they want guidance on uh, other matters, and they also want to know how people are doing it. So, you know, what's your secret? How are you? And so it's interesting you talked about the pandemic at first and how you push through and you're, you know, you're busy, you're still working, you're, you're open, you guys are thriving. And I'm just, I'm wondering, you know, about, um, I guess one issue is how do you keep your, your workforce, your staff motivated, you know, cause you're, you're, I could tell you're an energetic guy and yeah. I, I can kind of relate to that. You know, I'm, I see myself as pretty energized as well. People that know me, um, I say energized, they'll say hyper, but I'll say energized. I, I think <laughs> more of a euphemism, but you know, how do you motivate your, let's say like your, your staff and your managers, you know, that work under you when, you know, they're out there and some of them are feeling the burnout of COVID-19? Yeah, I mean, you know, both positivity and negativity are contagious. Um, mm -hmm. And I learned, you know, really early on, but I'd say in the last five years, some of the lessons I've gotten have really focused on that and how to motivate your staff. And, and you do it as, you know, through leadership. And like, there's the one, you know, great quote, like, if you want to be a leader, don't tell everybody to pick up the rope, pick up the rope and show them, like do it mm -hmm. with them, uh, be the example. Um, so that's what I really focused on. And, and it's always been that way. I, I remember at one point, my partners, I don't know, there was one night where I got just like, I was just like sick of things. This is going back years, you know, not even, sure. not even this time, you know, and they're like, oh no, if Jeremiah is getting negative, something must be wrong, you know? And it was funny because <laughs> they had already cashed in their chips but for me it was a call to like be better and i was like oh okay let me just splash some water on my face and get myself together and i realized like that's really what pe the value people get from me around me you know like the, the staff mm -hmm. and everything is like yeah i know a lot about business and i make good suggestions and so on but that, that's all just like you know a commodity it, it was really like my ability to be positive and motivate so i really i really have focused on that a lot of the last few years and it paid big dividends right now where staff that left still will call me and say, man, things are crazy in my life. Uh, I need, I just need a little, a little positive juice. I know you got it. Mm. And then the ones that have stayed just every day, they're like, if, if you're, if you're okay with it, I'm okay with it. And I think that was a, that was a big factor in, in our, our success lately. It's just no matter what, I mean, now the city agencies are coming in hard and inspecting mm. and, and requirements are higher, especially for us, because we're right near, you know, the, the whole hot, 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 excuse me, hot spot business, you know, sure. over the last few weeks, like Borough Park and, and Midwood are both neighboring, uh, you know, neighboring neighborhoods to us, bordering neighborhoods. And uh, they, they came into, into Windsor Terrace hard. And so it was just like one more facet, one more, you know, obstacle we have to deal with and an adjustment we have to make. And I just smile and they're like, okay. And I'm like, just smile. That's all you can do. Just smile, nod your head. We do our best, you know, mm -hmm. and, and we adjust to problems as they come in. I think that's a really important lesson for today. You know, I mean, it, there are many takeaways from, from talking to you tonight and I appreciate it. I think that, you know, one thing I'd want listeners tonight, our guests, our audience, people who are own businesses to know is that, um, yeah, the example you set it's almost like in your home, you know, if you're, you know, have a family, you have children, you know, they, you know, if you model a certain behavior mm -hmm. or response and they're going to pick up on that and, and children will tend to, you know, there's an expression that some things can be caught as much as taught. So um, I think that, you know, positivity is contagious. And so, um, you know, not everything that's contagious is bad, like COVID-19 contagious, bad, you know, but right. then, yeah. you know, positivity really does spread. So interesting, you know, because I, I mean, I talk with people all the time whether they're on the show or whether they're just, you know, colleagues networking. And, you know, we talk about uh, advice for business owners about, you know, approaching your business with different cash revenue models and how to strip down some of your expenses and how do you, you know, save cash flow and talk about um, employee relations from a corporate industrial psychologist point of view. But, you know, what I hear you saying, it kind of comes back to a very basic, you know, it's just, you know, um, people are looking to you for leadership and, you know, if, if you, you know, are in there and staying positive and, and, and of course, you know, letting your employees, I think, see, you know, see you and your, as a real person, whether it's, you know, I, I mean, everyone's gonna have stressful times, stressful nights, yeah. stressful evenings, whatever. And, and I think it's just important, but that's a, that's a really good tip, you know, for people to take away that if you're around your employees, around your workers, you know, if you can somehow stay positive. Um, I've always found that 
one thing that helps me stay positive around people is if I can just hear what's going on in their life and maybe if, of course, if they want me to, right, I'm not going to be intrusive, yeah. but to kind of you know, weigh in with some, maybe some, uh, some feedback or guidance if it's requested, then it kind of gets me out of my head worrying about whatever I'm worried about. So I imagine that maybe for you with Della, if you've got other interests that you're helping people with, like I know you're uh, a teacher and a martial arts instructor. Mm -hmm. Do you find that you're having other, other entrepreneurial and other uh, businesses and, and, and interests helps you in this time of pen of COVID-19 because you're able, are you able to take lessons from one and apply them to the business? Or? One, 100%. I mean, mm -hmm. more than anything, you asked a couple of times in the show, uh, I'd say my training in martial arts and particularly in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, um, those lessons have mm -hmm. serviced me so much over the years. And, and definitely th those lessons have become even more valuable lately. And, and some of the, the big ones are just like, you know, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Uh, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And these are things that business owners need to really like, uh, you know, adopt all the time anyways. I, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like a lot of people were, were, uh, taking the easy road mentally, uh, over the last few years. And that, you know, you always have to be ready to battle. Like if you're, if you're, especially if you're a small business, like you just mm -hmm. don't ever get comfortable. Don't ever think like, oh, you know, the sales I have today are going to be the sales I have next year or two years or five years. Like it's a long, long battle mm -hmm. and it's a long, you know, it's a long journey and you just have to be prepared, you know, to protect yourself all along the way because it can come in many different forms. I mean, I never expected it to show up the way it did, but I'd say for the last three years, I've been prepared for a certain level of, you know, catastrophic kind of blowout. Just, I mm -hmm. kind of, I don't know, I just sensed it. And I was training and teaching martial arts on a daily basis. And it was just like really getting the, the, the saw sharp. And so when this happened, I just really plugged those, those, uh, those values in. And unfortunately, you know, schools are closed right now. We're not able to, we're not able to train, but we've stayed in communication. Those lessons are there. I've got hundreds of emails with uh, you know, the message of the week and things like that. And I, I fall back on that constantly just as a source of inspiration. Um, and yeah, it's, it's when you do that every day, it makes this easier. I mean, when I, I sent this out on Twitter earlier today, like it's so funny that we're talking about it. It just came to mm -hmm. my mind. You right. know, the, we were always taught the mind has a negative bias. So it's even, it's even harder work to be mm -hmm. positive, to have that positive mindset but it's like a muscle. It's just like, it gets stronger with repetition. And if you just do it a little bit every day, over time, all of a sudden you're like, wow, I have these like strong muscles. You didn't, mm -hmm. you don't see your daily progress, but all of a sudden you're like, whoa, I'm pretty ripped, bro. And that's, that's positivity is the same way. Mm -hmm. And those values are the same way. So it's just something that we kind of hammered every day. And it's been just a huge resource for me through all of this. I think it's a really good point. I mean, it's, it's something I, I really hear and, and, you know, can, uh, I think as you're talking about it, it's made me think about in my own experiences in life. And um, well, first off, the thing about being prepared for catastrophic events, you know, I mean, as an employment lawyer, I know oh, all the time do, right? come to the, <laughs> when they get that Department of Labor audit investigation or, you know, a lawsuit uh, served upon them. And so, um, so it, I can definitely vouch for what Jeremiah is saying. It's definitely something to be, and, it's, and there's a balance too, right? Because you've got to be ready for bad things to happen and prepared and hardworking, but also not so hypervigilant to the sense that you become paranoid and burnt out and just you yeah. know, completely always looking over your shoulder. But I hear you kind of striking a balance because if you have optimism and positivity thrown in with the realization that, you know, this is all impermanent. I mean, you know, yeah. eight, nine months ago, if, if I asked someone to, you know, hey, you got your mask ready to go, they'd look at me like I'm crazy or yep. even just, you know, <laughs> leading a meeting and saying, okay, I'm going to mute everyone now, you know, just some of the things were like, so the, I think you definitely have to look for those and um, to be prepared for. Um, I think it's also a great lesson for people listening to, like, to be inspired to say, hey, we will get through this, you know, and the, the only way through it is through it. And that lesson about, and this is great stuff too. I'm so glad to have guests like yourself, you know, I mean this, who are, you know, I have my expert guests who are talking about, you know, things like in terms of uh, certain services and, and certain dynamics and certain uh, methodologies of, of, of employee relations. But, you know, it all kind of boils down to keeping it simple, right? You know, it's simplicity mm -hmm. and, you know, setting a positive example, being prepared, being, as I think you said, this might be good for folks to remember, if you want to get through this pandemic as a business owner, 
get comfortable in being uncomfortable. And that's something that Buddhists, we talk about all the time, the meditation. Oh, right, right. You know, it's a meditation is not always a super happy choice. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, so it, it can be, but it can also be, my mind's suck. crazy, I'm observing it, my, my chest feels tight, and yep. five minutes or 10 minutes feels like an hour and a half, you know. Mm -hmm. Speaking of time, um, we have a commercial break <laughs> coming up. So um, we're just talking with Jeremiah Fox, uh, again, restaurateur, entrepreneur, uh, and host of a sh a the Entrepreneur Web. So stick around, folks. I'm Eric Sauer, Employment Law Today, here on Talk Radio NYC. We'll be right back. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC. Uplift, educate, empower. small business trying to navigate the COVID-19 related employment laws? Hello, I'm Eric Sarver, employment law business law attorney and host of the new radio show, Employment Law Today. On my show, we'll have guests to discuss the common employment law challenges business owners are facing during these trying times. Tune in on Tuesday evenings from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern time on talkradio.nyc. Are you a business owner? Do you want to be a business owner? Do you work with business owners? Hi, I'm Stephen Fry, your small and medium-sized business or SMB guy. And I'm the host of the new show, Always Friday. While I love to have fun on my show, we take those Friday feelings of freedom and clarity to discuss popular topics in the minds of SMBs today. Please join me and my various special guests on Friday at 11 a.m. on talkradio.nyc. Do you run or are ready to open your own business? Hi, I'm Jeremiah Fox. I've been operating and opening small business for the last 25 years, and I'm the host of the new show, The Entrepreneurial Web. Tune in every Friday at noon Eastern time for insights and stories on the nuances of running small business right here on Fridays at noon, talkradio.nyc. <laughs> You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Welcome back to Employment Law Today. I'm Eric Sauver, your host. I'm also uh, an employment law business law attorney with the law office of Eric M. Sauver, here with Jeremiah Fox. Jeremiah, it's funny we heard your commercial on the break because it's a great segue. I wanted to ask you if you know you could talk a little bit more about, you talked about some of your motivation and what drives you. You talked about some of the resilience, the resources you draw upon with lessons from jujitsu and talked about modeling positivity for your employees as a great way to keep your business going during these tough times. Can you, uh, yeah, tell us a little bit more or share with us about the entrepreneurial web? I'm curious how that came about. And also, may, I know the substance of, maybe you can tell some of our guests about the substance of the show. And yeah, yeah. sure. So it's, it's funny. Uh, I, I ended up hosting a show because I was a guest on Jeff Goodman's show a little more than a year ago, um, Rediscovering New York, which is also on talkradio.nyc, great show about, uh, it's like a virtual tour of neighborhoods and they were doing Windsor Terrace that particular week and he got my information. I came on the show and at the end, Sam was like, have you ever thought about hosting a show? And I was like, no, I don't. And then he was like, you should think about it. And so we talked and here we are. But a uh, very interesting point is that the show, uh, you know, Sam and I talked at length about it before I went live and it was, about highlighting not only, the, you know, like the successes of being an entrepreneur, but really, and, it, and it, it's in the, uh, you know, in the commercial, like the nuances, you know, the write-up talks about, you know, the, the trials and tribulations of being a small business owner and an entrepreneur. So not just like, oh yeah, I'm an entrepreneur, man. I'm making stacks. I got a car and a boat, you know, it's like, what what's it really like on the ground level? Cause that's where I'm at. I'm boots in the street still, you know, I've got, I'm working into some digital and, and consultation kind of businesses, but I've been boots in the street for so long. And it's like, 
down here on the real ground on the playing field it gets mm. tough sometimes so the show is about celebrating the successes but also all of my guests that i bring on from all different industries i don't care what, what your background is i want you to come on i want you to talk about you know you being just like an average person like everybody else building this business what are some things to look out for what mm -hmm. are some things to double down on that really you know will make things easier but like i always want that gem of like watch out for this because this will get you and i've had i've had some guys drop some really great information so it's about that it's just about being informative also i like it to be entertaining uh but but informative in terms of like if somebody's listening that works a day job and that is like i want to get out of this i want to be my own boss i have this passion i want to do this thing mm -hmm. oh here's a show about a guy he's a contractor he started out doing you know investment finance and he's got his own contracting business i would love to do that so you listen to that show and hopefully you get some you know some good background on like what works what to look out for and just you know some laughs maybe as well along the way because you have to laugh if you can't laugh boy this gets tough real quick <laughs> yeah for sure, absolutely. In, in any field, I think in any field and any or yeah. organization, pardon me, <clears throat> you'd have to definitely have a sense of humor to roll with things. Yeah. The, um, I think, you know, that whole basis there, you know, hearing you talk about your show and your show preceded the pandemic, am I right? Or Yeah, yeah, it was, it, we started in September of 2019. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it was, you know, it was kind of cute up until March, I would bring people on, you know, a lot of times it was friends of mine that had their own business because I was cutting my teeth as a host too, with no background in it at all. So sure. people on, I knew I could have like a long conversation with, and if I fumbled, they would pick the ball up and it would still, <laughs> you know, it'd still work out. Um, but then, but then things took a very interesting twist in, uh, in March and in mid March, my first show virtually, I, I had the, uh, the owner of the restaurant across the street from Della. We were both sitting in our own dining rooms. We zoomed it in and we talked about like the reality of this and what it means and how not thinking in competitive terms, but supportive terms is what's mm -hmm. going to have us both open at the end of this as a model for other restaurant owners and other neighborhoods and communities where they're scratching their head too, saying like, what's going on? And, and, and since then, the show has really taken a, a strong turn in that direction, having guests like yourself on specifically mm -hmm. talking about like, this is, you know, what it's like to start a law practice. But right now, we're getting some gems from Eric on how do you deal with employee and business, you know, uh, litigation or, or legislation in these times like we mm -hmm. have we have some new things to think about so there was there's been a little hyper focus lately which has been great you know and it gave me some direction i've spent a lot of time talking especially with um with dojo owners you know martial arts instructors uh physical therapists things of that nature because i'm really into fitness and and that whole scene and they've had a just i mean they've had a harder time i think than uh than restaurants have um mm -hmm. so to bring people on like that to hopefully that's another industry i want to see thriving at the end of this, you know, because people are going to need it because bad habits have been developed <laughs> through, mm -hmm. throughout this period, people whether it's <laughs> exercising and not eating right. People are exercising less, eating different things, home. eating more things, drinking more. And uh, yeah, and, and gyms have been closed for the most part. So people are going to need that support when it comes out. And those guys need to be able to have a steady practice so that they're at least as good when they reopen as they were when they closed, if not better. Uh, but to be there to really support the people in their community. Um, so it's been, it's been, a, it's, it's worked out for me in that regard. And I, you know, I've, I've stayed on top of it. Um, and, and I think it's been a good resource for people. Hmm. You know, that, that story you told about sitting, you know, in the dining room across from the, you know, the other owner, right. Mm -hmm. Discussing things and realizing that while in theory, you might be competitors out there and in some, in some regards or, uh, but e even if you view business as a competitive operation or industry, right? You know, restaurants that, you know, or, let's say, or even, you know, attorneys, we have many people who practice employment law. I mean, I always like to joke that, you know, <clears throat> there's so many lawyers in New York City alone, at least before the pandemic, that, you know, you can throw a rock and hit at least five. And some people do that as a, as a hobby for sport. So they throw rocks at lawyers. So, you know, but, but this idea of that, uh, this idea that we are actually, you know, stronger, like when we, you know, pull our resources together. Yeah. Um, and the idea that what you talk about on your show, what I'm hearing you saying, you know, the, the end result, but also the success story, the hard work that goes into it, knowing that we need to draw upon each other and support one another. Uh, I, I wonder if that's another 
lesson for, for tonight for people listening as to how to get through this pandemic, you know, not, yeah. not so much right to see our neighbors and I, by neighbors, I mean our, our fellow business owners as a, another threat, but to see it at them as, you know, someone in the same boat, someone that we can share with, you know, that, that the, it's like, do you look at life as uh, a sort of a, a pizza pie where there's a limited number of slices and I've got to grab mine, or do you look at a different perspective where, you know, there's not that, you know, there's like, an, uh, there's not that scarcity mentality. So yeah. um, really interesting to hear about the entrepreneurial web. You know, I know we've only got a couple minutes to wrap up and um, want to give you a chance just to share whatever you'd like, you know, it could be, you know, uh, a funny story about your favorite, you know, incident during the pandemic, it could be just some information about Della restaurant, where we should go. Um, if you want to say stop in and visit, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, what train stop you're near and what the hours are and such? Or? Yeah, sure. So we're on the we're at the Fort Hamilton stop on the F and G in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Again, it's on Prospect Avenue. Della is 1238 Prospect Avenue. The juice box is 1289 Prospect Avenue. If you, I love, I'm in the street all day. I, like I said, I'm boots in the street. I'm always out every day. I don't take days off. Christmas day, everything will be closed down. I'll get a day off then. Um, but yeah, I love to hang and talk shop. If you're ever in the area, even just come by and say hi. There's a, it's even on our website on Della. If you ever want to find Jeremiah, just stand on the corner of Prospect and he'll emerge and I will. I'll like come out of a, either like the basement of a building or, you know, swing down off of a rope. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm always out and I'm always game for, for some good conversation. Um, Della is open five to nine every night. Uh, and then the wine store is open 12 to nine every day. Um, the radio show is every Friday at noon live. Uh, we're also, it's also on YouTube, on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, all major streaming platforms. And you can find me, I'm all over the place, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, TikTok. I'm killing it on TikTok lately with TikTok, my jiu-jitsu well, instructing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. I do uh, like workout and uh, jujitsu uh, tutorials on TikTok. Uh, I've been crushing it lately. I've just like gone through the roof. It's funny. My kids are like, dad, you got more likes than me. You got more followers than me. <laughs> and it's just, it's about hard work, but it's also like the niche, you know, I found the niche and I ran with it. So, yeah. Yeah. That's what it's all about. You know, yep. finding that niche, having that, having some fun along the way too. Yeah. Well, it looks like we've got to come to an end, um, but I want again, everyone heard how to find Jeremiah and how to find his show, uh, The Entrepreneur Web, on Fridays at noon. Uh, Jeremiah, it's a pleasure having you. Thanks for coming on to the show tonight. Um, next week, my guest will be Trisha Tate. Uh, she's an outsourced CFO and also very involved in uh, female minority-owned businesses and empowerment, and also very inspirational. So I'm Eric Sauber. I'm here every Tuesday night from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m., Eastern Standard Time here on Talk Radio NYC. Tune in next week and everyone have a safe night, healthy night, and thanks for watching. Thank you.